because I know recently you've been, you know, making a social media presence. Yeah. Yeah. Uh -oh. <laughs> and um, your presence has been felt. And we're not going to get into the controversial aspects of it again because we're here just to talk slop. And feel free, you can fry stuff at me as well. You know, this is like an open space. It's not just me. You know, I've got, I've got an, an agenda. You know what I'm saying? But feel free to jump in and you know, do it how you feel it needs to be done. But um, so we want to focus on enlightening people rather than, you know, any, any, anything else but that. So, um, but you posted a few posts recently that have been geared around inspiring people around mind, body, spirit, you know, engaging them in, you know, in, you know, controlling their thoughts and their thinking and because that's what they manifest and so forth. And um, really cool stuff. I like what you're doing. Keep it up. For real, for real, for real. Um, but at the same time, one of the posts I'm familiar with, um, and I know many thousands of people now are familiar with, was a post on menstruation. Oh, okay. and, um, let's not go into the reaction. Let's not go into the reaction. What I want to go into is just the intention. You know, of what in you know what you was talking about. You know, what you were sharing. We want to use this platform to open that up discussion because there's other people that I know that I'm comfortable with and you know I'm familiar with. We have these types of conversations, you know. So, um, you know, you will be one of many that I hope to have these types of dialogues with, just to raise awareness for both females and males, you know, human beings in general. And what was that post? What was your intentions behind it? And um, you know, yeah, and whatever you, and then let's bounce if we can bounce off each other. Okay. Before I tell you what the intention was, let me just say what the video was about. For the people who don't know it, I uh, I made a video about the challenge that I was facing, which was about um, um, my thinking, my mindset, believing that I was spiritually impure when I'm on my moon cycle. And um, I grew up like that, you know, like it's spiritually impure. You cannot engage in spiritual practices, um, you know, and depending on what Islamic scholar you follow, um, they also say like you cannot go to the mosque or, you know, you cannot touch a Quran and et cetera, et cetera. So that's one side. That was my thinking, uh, which I was really, really believing. And at the same time, um, in the later years, as I was developing myself as a woman, um, I didn't feel like that. I didn't feel that I was spiritually impure. Uh, on the contrary, I felt spiritually um, stronger. Um, I felt more charged. I had different kind of dreams. So spiritually, I was just really, really having a peak when I'm on my, when I'm on my cycle. So it just made me question, like, why, why, you know, why should I stay away from practices when I feel like this, you know, when everything in my body tells me, no, you need to stay in your practice now. This is the time that you need to practice. I mean, when I'm on my moon cycle, I just, I cannot just pause and stop thinking about God or, you know, delete the whole God program and don't do anything that I usually do. So it just made me question, like, who, why would God tell me that I cannot, worship anymore so um i just decided to google on that um especially with you know the knowledge that i gained in the last few years about um female cycles you know the moon cycle and its power its spiritual power so um you know i just went searching and digging in the quran and i couldn't find anything about um the menstruation cycle in relation to worship or praying or fasting or any other kind of spiritual practice the only thing that i could find about menstruation in the quran was in relation to sex so it just made me question like whoa <laughs> then why did i believe this for all those years in my life and you know there are many hadiths again stories sayings uh, researches from scholars um and um you know they came out with information like oh you're spiritually impure as a woman should so you shouldn't engage in spiritual practices mm. and um basically the video was about like yeah this is what i believed for years but my body tells me it's different 
you know, the Quran tells me, you know, it's not even in the Quran. So it's a man-made rule, just another scholar who made this rule. So, hey, I'm not going to follow this rule. And that's what the video is about. And my intention was to, um, different intentions, to be honest. Um, it comes from the place where um, back in the days I used to deny or reject a very important part of myself, which is my moon cycle. Mm -hmm. And I was rejecting this part of myself because of uh, the mind control, the programs that we are growing up with as a woman. Like, you know, it's something that you need to be ashamed of or, you know, it's something that you don't really talk about or, you know, it's something dirty or impure or in Christianity and in other religions, we even believe it's like a curse. And, you know, we as women get this because we ate from the apple and you name it. So there's like this whole program um, that is still alive today in not just women's minds, but also in men's mind. And I'm really interested in, you know, uh, improving yourself on a spiritual level um, and just, you know, putting different kind of generations into this world. And I know they come through the wombs and I know women carry stuff in the wombs. And one of the things that we carry is the shame and this, this, this rejection of our own natural cycle. And this, the intention behind this video is also just to break this cycle and to just maybe a bit provocative, but show women that we should listen to our own bodies and not just allow men or other human beings um, make up rules, rules for us, telling us what we can or what we cannot do. Nice. Well, I personally thought it was inspiring, you know, um, me as a viewer, I know, um, so they, you know, we got reactions, obviously, from different, you know, different persuasions. But um, ultimately, you know, you're talking about an, uh, another kind of technology, another cycle, another experience that people have that you can utilize, as you're suggesting, to empower yourself, um, that makes you stronger, you know. Um, you said, you're, you know, your dreams are heightened and stuff like that. So, um I'm aware that a lot of the, you know, in the past and in the present, you know, there's a lot of people who speak on those, you know, lifestyles, those practices when you speak highly of the menstruation experience, you know, and there's male and females that, you know, that do that, you know, it's, it doesn't go down too well, you know, because of the yeah. type of that, you know, is associated with that. So um, I commend you for standing up and speaking out and doing what you've got to do and spreading the blood <laughs> it's okay it's not the sports uh, we know that the blood is the life force you know i'm aware that you know that's where the ancestors reside you know it's in your blood in the dna and stuff it's real potent stuff you know it's similar to the slop you know in that in that regard where we might see it as gory you know and it has its you know um imagery based on me you know how the media has portrayed us the you know blood you know no different from death than a lot of the other taboos we have in life but when we come to you know, come face to face for it and explore it for what it is as a scientist. You know, you know, perfect example. You know, when a scientist has got to look at a piece of shit, he's not there going, Ugh, you know, this is a <laughs> smelly and this is, you know, he's, he's got something to do. He needs to see what this is, you know, and that's what we need to, we've got to get into the shit <laughs> to find out what it is. So I fully understand why you would want to and need to explore that if that's not something that's been shared with you that happens to you all the time, you know. Um, no matter what that's like dreaming for me it's like oh we dream I've got to know what dreams are about then you know that's something that you know just happens you know it's just happening yeah. but, you know it's a it's a file it's a program that works within you that you know you don't control necessarily maybe you can manipulate in different ways maybe you can manipulate your cycle maybe you can manipulate your dreams to work for you work to your advantage you know and yeah I, I guess it requires exploring that <laughs> So, you know, and um, you know, having a direct experience allows you to be qualified to be able to speak on that. So, um, yeah, yeah, keep on speaking, keep on speaking. On that. Yeah. So, um, I don't know if there's anything that you'd like to share, you would like to ask, but we're going to open it up again slightly. We're going to, you know, tone it down. So, um, we're just open it. Where you at? How are you feeling, man? I feel good. Mm -hmm. I'm on my moon. <laughs> I feel good. <laughs> nah, I'm good. Um, let me just see if there are any um, 
topics that I select to discuss. Yeah, because there's there's actually a lot more. There's a lot more. So, because I'm not going to tell you now, but we're not going to go there now about like the media stuff. Because me and you have had conversation about the media, not so much about your profession of me, you know, your your background in media, but your experiences in media, what it, what you learned from that. Because right now in the current climate, you know, I've avoided the conversation, all the conversation, so we're not going into it. But you know, with so much knowledge and information being put out there and misinformation at the same time by the media. With, you know the current climate and someone who's had years of experience in the media and dealing you know being on the news i definitely want to get into some of that with you just about you know the, you know it's like oh we can speak to someone who's been there and experienced it and you know when you're not there now and why are you not there now we didn't go into none of that so that's an area that maybe we can pick up on the next one or some media type stuff um, and what you can share with us with that but um what i do want to do just basically because um people want to find out more about you and um how they're going to do that where they're going to find you you can share some of that with us before we close up all right um uh, online world of course instagram facebook instagram more active than facebook which is my last name first name i think you can mention it somewhere instead of just spelling it or just my website sense7.com um on youtube you know i create videos discussing different topics uh or just go to my one of my yoga classes if you want to have a direct experience but there's different ways of finding me just google in this world 2020. Oh, easy 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 peasy okay so you've opened it up because we, we still, i still feel i still got energy i still want to bring some stuff out of you and then you mentioned your website, Send7. So um, what's that about, Send7? Just share uh, Seven is a magic number. Seven is my magic number. Um, Send7 is, is my online blog, um, the website where I put everything, where I share my thoughts, where I share my experiences. Um, the number seven for me is related to the seven chakras, uh, to the seven days of the week. Maybe you've got to get into all of that stuff. Yeah, man, okay. <laughs> so, yeah, the, the seven colors of the spectrum. It's, it's yeah, it's, 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 it goes a bit deep. Okay. So um, I want to get more out of you about seven and the role it plays in, it played in your life before we go. And um, see, we didn't talk about chakras. That's how, actually, it wasn't just the yoga. It was a chakras, you know. It was, all, it was, the, it was the chakras, the seven, because that's all yeah. making more sense. So, yeah, there's, there's, there's still more to delve into. We're definitely saving chakras for the next one. Yeah, well. because I think we need seven hours for that. There you go. All right, I'll, I'll slot it in. I'll get it slotted in. But um, we can do it in seven parts. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, I think. But... Um, Come on, all right, you said this sacred seven, seven days of the week, you know, this, that, bring more to it. What does, is it just that, that there's all of these, you know, what does it mean to you, man? Just give me a bit more about what this seven means to you and why is it significant? Why have you named your website? I'll get it, you know, but just... Well, seven is my full word if you're into astrology and numerology and everything. Seven is my soul number. It's my lucky number. But I've been pretty much obsessed with the chakras and the knowledge around chakras. And you know, the different systems, because there are different systems. There's a Hindu system mentioning the seven chakras. In Sufi, they say we have eight chakras. There's Asian, Ooh. Egyptian uh, chakra systems, you know, where we call it Kara and, and all kinds of different names. So um, I just have this secret obsession with chakras and the knowledge around it. Okay. Um, and just to keep it simple, I always try to explain the chakras according to the seven. Um, main centers inside of our bodies and um yeah so it's be basically it's because of the chakras and you know the seven connects to the seven planets the seven days of the week the seven music notes the seven colors of the spectrum wow uh, okay, okay i look forward to i'm really looking now because i'm just remembering now you know this because we were just flowing no pre-questions oh yeah there's this stuff there's some other stuff that we got to really get into because that was where I got a lot of inspiration and the knowledge that you were sharing around that to the point where I'm applying that to this day, you know, I'm seeing breath work techniques, as well as different various yoga postures and positions. I've been inspired by you and others, but I remember what the kickstart was, what the catalyst was, because I said it was delivered to me in a way that 
you know, was um, tangible, you know, it resonated. And um, I know you refer to it as the urban sexy approach as well, you know, like <laughs> it really, you know, it speaks, it speaks, it speaks to certain people, you know, it speaks to certain people. So I definitely want to have you speaking on that from your perspective because people would have heard of chakras. Again, I've seen your presentations and I know you've got some coming up and things there, you're going to be going into that. But there's a lot more to it, like you shared, there's all these different systems. So when people approach chakras, you know, as a, as a novice, as a neophyte, as a, you know, uh, somebody beginning their journey into that, you know, they're given maybe one or just seven paradigms, you know, or just the, the first set of seven, but there's a lot more. So again, when we come back, that's what I want to get into, the other stuff, because that stuff is out there. So let's get into that other stuff. You know, let's get into the, you know, the shit. Let's get into the shit. <laughs> you know, into the places where people don't often go into it. You know, go into. And we've done that today with, you know, your experiences with, you know, psychedelics, yoga, and your relationship with your religion. And I really appreciate you sharing. Um, you know, and you know, allowing people into your world, into your home, into your space, into your mind, into your experiences. And um, because I know that's what's key. That's what talking shit does. Basically, um, you bring, you bring stuff out. And, you know, um, I will think next time come with one or two bullet points or questions about bullet points or things just because the chakra stuff, I do know that you've got some real interesting stuff, you know, to share on that. And um, I hope that we can do that in the coming weeks. And again, we're going to be chopping it up and giving people little bites and little segments. And um, we'll, we'll, we'll be feeding them, you know, um, or spreading the spores, you know, planting those seeds. And hopefully you'll um, see some of the prosperous things that you're doing hitting on this side of the water because this is what we're trying to do in spreading the scores is connect the people up you know internationally as well and um, there's loads of things happening on the, on the horizon but what i do acknowledge is that there is a lack of representation of various groups you know um you know whether it's people of color whether it's based on the gender thing you know and um, we definitely want to get more of this out there and um, I want to use this to encourage other people to say, you know, you need to hit up Senna and get you, her on your podcast, you know, check out what she's doing. It's, um, it's needed in this day and age. If she's inspired me and if that people that I know, it's definitely going to inspire others. You're doing the work. I encourage you to continue doing the work. As I said, I look forward to catching up with you again in the near future. And um, enjoy the rest of your evening, man. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. And I'm really looking forward to, uh, to talk shit with you again and share yeah. more. <laughs> man. Well, look, as I said, man, stay safe, stay blessed, and we'll catch up soon. Thank you, you too. All right, peace.